Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we will revisit the Windows 11 installation on the 2015 Lumia 950 XL and try out how usable it is as a PC. So let's get started. Ok, so let's test out a few programs. And what better program to start with than window blinds? Windows 11 looks way too clean. I want to install some completely over the top themes from the early 2000s. This should work because we have a full Windows 11 here and we have the emulation layer that emulates x86 instructions back to ARM. So window blinds seems to be installed. Let's try it out. Huh, window blinds does not appear to be installed correctly on your machine. That does not sound good. For some reason since the installation we now have the dark theme, which is weird. Yeah, it looks like it's not working. So after that disappointment, let's test some games. As you can see, I added a fan to stop the phone from overheating. I also added a DVD drive to install some old games. So I would say let's just get started. The first one I tried is my favorite game, Force Story. It actually installed, which is nice. Okay. Okay, so DirectX 11 error. And I actually couldn't install DirectX 11 on here. And I couldn't install DirectX 9 on here, which was needed for another game. So welcome to the land of errors. Next up, I tried Need for Speed 2 SE using our weird external DVD adapter. So as you can see, it actually works <laughs> to connect a, a DVD drive to the Lumia, which is kind of interesting that it that this works. I mean, it should work since we now have like a PC here, but it's still weird to connect a CD drive to a phone. So it looks like the auto start is working, but if I try to install it, nothing happens. If I try to run the setup from here, it says this app can't run on your PC. To find a version for your PC, check with the software publisher. Yeah, so this did not work. Also, the other setup files here did not work. The same thing happened with Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. Then I tried World Racing 2, which as you can see on the desktop, actually installed, but it still did not work. Let's wait for the disk to spin up. If I try to run it, it always comes up with the DRM scheme here and tells me that I need to reboot my system for it to install. And I did that four times and it still tells me that every time. So this did not work. Next I had GTA Vice City which was complaining about not finding a DLL. San Andreas, which tells me I need DirectX 9. Like I said, I actually can't install any DirectX version on here. And the last thing I tested was, I have an image of my original Sims CD. Let's run the setup here. The music works. But if I click on install, nothing happens. <laughs> and just like the last time, if I go to setup and try to run the setup from there, all the applications here are not compatible. So yeah, then I wanted to install Minecraft from the store, but apparently if you go to the store and Look at the apps here, they already tell you your processor is not supported. Which is also weird because I thought on a Windows 10 or Windows 11 ARM device 
the Windows Store was the way to get apps. And I haven't found one that actually works on this ARM CPU here. So if we go to the Minecraft launcher here, here, this product isn't compatible with your PC's processor. Thousands of tears later. So I found a tutorial on how to install the Minecraft launcher on Windows on ARM. So I tried that, as you can see here. But there were of course some problems. As you can see, I tried to add a new instance, as described in this tutorial, to be able to play the Java version of Minecraft on an ARM device running Windows. If we start that, we sadly get an error. It tells me that my Java runtime is incompatible and I should edit it. The problem is, you can't just use the built-in Java runtime on Windows 10 on ARM or Windows 11 on ARM. And I tried many different versions specifically for ARM. As you can see, I have the Microsoft version here, the Microsoft JDK. I tried different JDKs in different versions, which should be compatible with Minecraft 1.17, but nothing worked. I also tried MultiMC, but I got the same problems. So I don't know why, but it looks like, at least for me on this device, the tutorials don't work and I can't install Minecraft Java Edition on an ARM version of Windows. So then I thought, why not install Steam? I have many old games on Steam, maybe some of them could work. So that's what I did. I installed Steam, which took very long to install, but then I tried to download some games. This is where the next problem started. So here you can see the problem. The UI isn't working. Sometimes you can see parts of the menus, but as soon as you point your cursor on it, they go away. So what I found out was that using the big picture mode actually worked. So that way I installed some games with very low requirements from the late 90s and early 2000s. Okay, so as you can see, Steam big picture works. It's kind of slow, but it works. And that way I could actually install the games. Okay, let's try the first one. Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. Okay, it just won't launch. Let's try Half-Life. Cool. It also tried to launch. You could see the icon here for a split second and then it crashed without warning. Next, let's try Terraria. Okay, it threw an error. No suitable graphics card found. Perfect. Okay, let's try the next one. This is Railroad Tycoon 2. Another error message. Unable to set up video mode. And it thinks that our GPU can't handle 124 by 768 resolutions. <laughs> Great. Okay, um, yeah, my last hope is Portal. Let's see if that works. It's loading. Just like the others, you could see the icon appear here for a split second and it crashed. Great. So none of these games worked. I also downloaded some more offline games, which are open source and OpenGL, because I thought, okay, we might have problems using DirectX, which is also stated on the Windows on ARM Lumia page, that DirectX has its problems in this build. So I thought, why not try some OpenGL games? And I tried OpenTTD, I tried ZDoom, and I tried, where is it? Cesaria. Let's start with Cesaria, which actually launches. Yes, out of what feels like 200 games now, this is the first one to actually launch. That's just sad, I mean, come on. There were probably even more games on the original Windows Mobile than we could get running here. Okay, it looks good. Let's give it some time. Okay, ooh, it's super slow. Cesaria is an open source port of Caesars 2, I think, which is also a game from the late 90s, which I used to play back in the day and really liked. I can hear some sounds. Okay, that's a good sign. 
Okay, it crashed. Let's try the Open Transport Tycoon, which is, as the name suggests, an open source port of the Transport Tycoon. Okay, that works. That actually works great. Uh, okay, maybe not great. <laughs> it it works okay-ish. Let's build a road. Kind of hard to play through my camera with the small screen size, but that's not really the phone's fault. It does work, as you can see, and I think it works quite well. I mean, if there would be more going on on the screen, more particle effects or more animations, it might slow down, but in this state, I think this is actually playable. Cool! Our first game that actually worked. Let's try the next one. Z-Doom. Because the question is always, can it run Doom? And I hope it can. That's loud. Okay, we have the music. Ooh, but that looks slow. Oh, I think I've never seen Doom this slow. Oh, that's... That's unplayable. <laughs> that is completely unplayable. Oh. No. Nope, that does not work. Even the menu actually lags. The menu lags so much I can't get out of it. Okay, so it looks like 2D games from the 90s work, but 3D games don't. <laughs> ah, what a shame. The next one I wanted to try is Super Tux. Also a great game from my childhood. Back when I tried my first Ubuntu distribution, this was pre-installed, which is why I have quite nostalgic feelings for it. So let's install it and see if it works. Okay, it installed. Let's see if it works. Longtime viewers of the channel might remember that we tried to play this on the first generation Apple TV and it ran dog slow. So let's see if this can work better than a 2007 TV set-top box. Does it even start? Huh. Of course. It crashes. Why not? Why, why would it run? Oh man. Disappointments everywhere here. Now let's test the day-to-day -day usability of this system. Because while installing applications, it actually felt quite snappy. Let's go to YouTube. No, Microsoft, I don't want your cookies. Thank you. I mean, the page does take some time to load, but that is to be expected from a 2015 CPU. Let's look for one of my videos. In this video, I added an eGPU <laughs> to an Apple TV which is quite a funny video. If you haven't seen it, I would consider watching it. Shameless advertisement here. So yeah, I mean, it works. It actually works. YouTube on Windows on the Lumia. As you can see, like normal web browsing is actually fine. You can see the pages load quickly, scrolling is not delayed. That actually seems to be working quite well. The last thing I wanted to test was video playback, but as we've seen, if YouTube actually works, this one should also work. I've installed the VLC player on here, which actually has a 64-bit ARM version for Windows. So let's see if that works. It does not... Ah, okay, there is something... Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. You don't need network access. I just want to play a video. Next. Wow, I think I closed it. Okay, let's try that again.
it, it actually works. I mean, this isn't a 4K file, it's only 1080p, but video playback actually works. Okay, that's, that's nice. So the last thing I wanted to try for general usability was if we could get the scaling a bit better dialed in. Because this is way too small for fingers. And who wants to use a phone with a mouse and keyboard? No one. Okay, we are currently at 200%. I played a bit with it and I think 325 was quite good for handheld use. Okay, it appears to be larger. <laughs> yes, that looks interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah, the start menu <laughs> does not really fit completely on here, which means we can't actually shut the device down, I think, because the button would be here. Can we shut it down using a long press? Yeah, okay, yeah, we could. No, I don't want to have Steam open right now. Let's open the Windows Explorer. Okay, but I mean, it's actually usable that way. It's very small, but I don't think it's actually worse than, for example, the Explorer on old Windows Phone, as you can see here. So I think it's actually usable that way. And it's kind of responsive. I mean, it's responsive enough. And if you want to have your full size start menu, I mean, you can always just rotate the screen. Let's try web browsing that way again. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it works. As you can see, why not? You could actually use that. As far as I know, you can actually do calls with it. The camera sadly doesn't work, but yeah, I think we can conclude this train wreck of a video. I mean, in the last video, the installation part was so easy. It was so much easier than I thought. <laughs> and here, nothing worked. Absolutely nothing worked. And I have to give a shout out to the Windows on ARM Lumia project again, because the installation process was just so simple and it's so well documented. And on the other hand, it's kind of sad to see the state of Windows on ARM, which is actually very surprising to me because for a few years now, I own Apple Silicon Macs. I own a uh, M1 MacBook Air and an M2 Mac Mini. And I have to say on macOS, you actually kind of forget that you're running a new CPU architecture because the emulation just works. And on here, at least on this device, I was reminded that I'm running on ARM like every few seconds because something did not want to install. That's a real problem. For office work, this setup would actually work and you can actually connect a external display here. Um, but for anything else where you need older applications that are not designed for the ARM CPU architecture, it just falls apart. The experience just falls apart. That said, it's super cool. I mean, there is no denying it. The fact that I have a fully working Windows 11 on a phone from 2015, that's just really cool. And although it has some problems, it is still way more usable than the Windows 10 mobile operating system that was on here from the factory. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time.